This conference will now be recorded. Hi friends, good morning. In this business intelligence master program, so in today's session, we are going to talk about how to validate copied data and add new columns while copying data. So basically, we are going to talk about how you can validate the copy data. So once you copy data into your uh, destination, let's say you are copying data from input folder to the output folder. So once we have copied data successfully from input folder to the output folder, then only you want to delete data from the input folder. Because example, you are taking some data as a backup. When you are taking data as a backup, what will happen? Uh, you just you need to make sure that you have take you have taken the entire data for backup. So once that particular data is successfully taken for the backup, then you should delete the data from the source system. So if you simply deleted the data from the source system without having the backup, there will be a problem. The problem will come. What, what kind of problem will come? So because if you lose your data, you cannot able to record it. That's why we need to make sure that we have taken the backup. Then we need to load this data into our destination. So when you are copying data, maybe you want to add some extra columns. Example, when I am taking this backup, so load date something like that if you want to take the new columns okay if you want to add the new columns example i have customer id customer name customer location in my source file i want to add load date i want to add load date to my particular uh, i need to add the load date to my file and then i want to load into my destination example my source is three columns my destination is going to have a of four columns because I'm going to add the extra column when I'm copying the data. All those things we'll see. Today's session we'll talk about scenarios, data flow estimation, prerequisite, and required resources. You know all these things. So same things I'm going to create. But the scenario is different. Okay, let me explain the scenario. So scenario is how to copy multiple files from blob to blob. You know already how to copy multiple files from blob to blob. Next, we are going to talk about how to add new columns while copying multiple files from input container to the output container. So you have a multiple files in your input container. So you are going to take all those multiple files from the input container and load it into the output container. When you are loading into output container, you are going to add the extra column. You are going to add the extra column to all these files and you are going to delete and you are going to delete the uh, files from the source uh, like input container if the file is successfully copied to the output container mm -hmm. and how to remove columns while copying multiple files from input container to output container let's say i don't want to load some of the columns customer id is i don't want to load it into my output container how to remove some of the columns while copying with multiple files we'll see then we will talk about how to validate copied files between source and destination how you are going to validate these copied files okay I have three files in my input container. So I'm I ran my copy activity. So copy activities copied those three files or not. I want to understand how to validate those. We'll see. Then we will talk about how to delete files from input container. If all files copied to output container successfully. I have an input container, I have an output container. In input container, I have three files. Those three files I want to delete it. Once these three files successfully copy to output container, I don't want to keep it in the input container. I want to delete it. How you can delete these things in input container we'll discuss. Then we will talk about how to use delete activity. Today we will I will just introduce delete activity how to use. Okay, this is a new activity that I'm going to introduce that is delete activity in today's session. Let's talk about data flow. See, create a data set to reference to input container and output container. So this is a copy activity basically, which is going to point to a, which is going to point to input container and output container, you know, source data set and sync data set. It is going to copy the data. Let's say it is copied emp.csv and coach.csv. And I'll just go, I'll take this particular result and I'll check in if activity activity of copy dot output dot files read files read means how many files are ready from the input container that will come copy dot output dot files read how many files ready from the input container will come to know activity of copy dot output dot files written how many files i have written to the destination that i will come to know. okay so these two things we will try to understand so 
what happens yesterday we discussed at the rate equals of 0 comma 0 yes it will return true if at the rate equals 1 comma 1 so it will return true at the rate equals 1 comma 0 it, it will return false okay in the same way files read value files written value both are same if both are same what i will get can you tell me if files read the number of files read and the number of files written what value i will get true very good. So I'll get it true. So if it is a true, I'll just go to the true uh, true conditions. If it is a false, I'll go to the false condition. In true condition, I will use simply delete activity. Because if it's true means successfully you have copied files from input to the output files. We have copied files from input to a container to the output container. So I want to delete these files from the input container. I will use a delete activity. So if the file is not successfully deleted, if, if the file is not successfully deleted, I will use a wait activity. I don't want to delete from the source container. Okay, so this is what I will do. So first it will pass the first file and I will delete it. Next it will, uh, next let's say if the second file, when it is passing second file, if the second file is, uh, uh, suppose example, so when I run first time, if uh, copy activity successfully copied those two files, if the condition is true, I will delete. Uh, I will delete the source files, meaning I will delete these files from the input container. If these two files are not successfully copied to the output container, then what I will do? I will not delete those files from the source container that is input container. I'll simply exit. Simply I will use some wait activity or you can say notification, you can send the alert notification saying that files not copied successfully into this particular path. You can send a uh, some mail notification. How to send mail notification, those things will come in the upcoming sessions. Okay, this is the whole diagram. Let's talk about Azure Blob Storage container, you know, when you create account container, all these things, you know. So CSV also, you know, I will not spend much time on these things. Arma separated pipe, tab separated, multiple types of CSV files you may have. So JSON also, you know, it's a key value, key value, key value pair. Okay. Estimations. How many linked services we need? How many linked no, services no, we need? No. No. One linked service. So we need only one linked service because basically I'm going to use a single storage account. So I need at least few data sets, two data sets I need basically uh, for copying data from blob to blob for deleting a data set. You need to tell from which folder you need a one data set like that. Based on reference points, we need to design the data sets. I will use copy activity to copy data from blob to blob. But if you want to delete, you need to use a delete activity like that. Based on requirement, you need to use the activity, but ma our main intention is copying the data. So I will use copy activity to copy data from blob to blob. Pipelines, one pipeline. What type of IR we will use? Azure integration one type. So required resources, I hope everybody know what is storage account data factor integration on different types, link resource data set activity and pipeline. So for today lab, we need storage account and Azure data factory v2. I'll go and create those two things quickly. Click from here. Let's click on data factory. Let's click add to create the data factory. Cloud Pandit Databricks master program. Oh, sorry, it's not a master program. Let's click create. Create a new resource group. There's a VI master program. Click OK. Region is east to yes. Name of the data factory you can say cloud funding ADF V2. So name is not available. You just have to give today date. Name is unique. Git configuration. I will configure it later. Click review this date. You know how to create this. Um, yes, just click create to create this data factory. I want to go here and I want to create the storage account. Okay, let's see how you can create the storage account.
Okay, so let's click on storage accounts. Let's click add to create the storage account. So BA master program and storage account name is a cloud connect. Cloud Pandit Blog. Name is available. No, name is not available. Cloud Pandit Blog 0130. Name is available. Click review plus create. Click review. Today's session is very interesting and very easy to understand the things, okay? Today's session is very easy to understand and uh, very interesting. Now you'll see. So data factory is ready. Storage account uh, is still deploying. Let's wait. A storage account ready. Go to resource. Click container. Click container. Here I will create two things. Okay, input container and output. Okay, so inside input container, I hope you know how to create containers. Go inside input container. I'm uploading the data. So you know how to upload the data. I hope you discuss this. Let's go to Thomas upload. I just upload cust 2.csv, cust 3.csv. Upload this two. Let's see what is the data we have in these two files. Let's click on cust 2.csv. Come to edit. Can you see what kind of data we have here? match player id player name player score okay next first to three dot cs come to edit so here what data you have match player id player name player score same same file i just upload one more file results dot cs Let's click on results. Excuse me. Click edit. Click preview. So this is the data credit ID, credit type, credit name, and credit score. Okay, this is the data you have. Okay, fine. This data I want to load it into my output output container. Once I load data into output container successfully. Then I want to delete the data from the input container. I, I will not come manually and delete. So files, whenever file comes here, those files will be copied into my output container. Once the file is uploaded into output container, files will be deleted from the input container. Okay, fine. Come to data factory. Let's click on go to this one. Click author and monitor. Okay, so here you just click on manage tab. You know this, right? So click new. Yeah, yeah, sure, Anand. I will share some of the JSON files. So block storage, click continue. There is a link to this. underscore block storage. You know. See, let's say today I don't want to connect to the Azure Blob Storage by using account key. There is something other ways to connect is SAS URI. 
by using tabs uri i want to connect by using sas uri i want to connect to the my uh, like azure blob storage okay how to connect to the blob store blob storage by using sas we will talk about this okay so for this go to storage account so because i cannot restrict our discussion only to these things so we need to explore more things come to shared access signature so here you see for connecting to blob file queue tables everything is there so but basically i'm trying to connect to the blob inside blob blob service i need to access and uh, like blob uh, folders i should be able to see like blob files whatever files videos audio images which i'm uploading everything i can able to see i can able to access once i access what kind of permission you should have you can able to read write delete list add create update process anything you can able to do full permissions okay so these are from when to when this particular token this kind of a password should be available so next six hours this password will be valid if you want to increase the time you can just increase the expiry time but next to six hours only this key will be available just click generate sas and connections to when once you click generate it will generate all these things in this you need to understand this is a sas token this is basically a sas token okay so what you will do you just copy this sas token you copy this sas token down to data factory see sas token here you need to give next so you need to give the sas url for that uh, for that go to storage here you see sas url means so otherwise you can just copy from here okay so dot net till dot net copy this copy from here and paste this here and test the connection connection successful okay i connected to the blob storage by using sas uri authentication method now one more thing in real time in real time we won't hard code this username and password we won't hard code this username and password we are going to read these things from the key vault we are going to read these things from the key vault what is key vault it's a secure place which is going to manage all your sense to security secrets you can say sense to information you can call it as a secrets you can call anything basically it's a more important information that you should not reveal to the outside people okay like your password account numbers and all these things right so likewise this storage name is fine but this sas token keys and all you should not explore like you you should not expose to the outside people that's why what you need to do uh, you need to read these things from the keyword keyword concept will introduce in the upcoming sessions for now just click create so i am able to connect is this clear because this is a new new topic for today is this clear to everybody any anybody is having any confusion please let me know everybody is clear on this full form for ss shared access signature so if you use account key so we we were using something called uh, access key right the problem with access key it will allow you to do anything it will allow you to do anything but it's basically a shared access signature see yes a yes sas you are i mean shared access signature sas what sas is doing sas is controlling complete access it is saying do you want to allow users to just read do you want to allow users to just write the data so all things it is asking okay that's how you can able to control these things that's how you can able to control these things is it clear clear ramesh everybody is clear friends only how you got the token string okay so how i got to go to shared access signature here you need to select blob file queue tables all these things okay so then you need to say services containers object the reason is we are focused so if you don't want this you uncheck basically we are worrying only about blob in blob i need to do everything and i need to have full permissions so that's why i'm just taking this full permissions and from when to when this particular like password should be 
uh, available. So it will be accessible next to six hours. After six hours, it will expire. If you want to increase the time, you can increase the time. Let's say maybe you just click on this. You just go here. So you just say till whatever time you want. Okay, let's say up to 2023-16. Till this date, I want this particular key should be valid. You just select that. Then you you need to just click on this. Okay, generate SAS and connection string. When you click on this, you see you'll get here SAS token. This is the SAS token. Okay, this is the URL. This two and this is the URL. This is how you'll get this token. You can copy paste URL. You just have to take your two here till dot net. Clear or Arun? Hello? Yes, yes, Arun, clear. Yeah, yeah, clear, clear. Any questions from anybody is having any questions still? Okay, fine. If no questions, come here. I'm oh, sorry. Come to your data factory. Let's go to other tab. So let's create a pipeline. Very simple pipeline that you are going to implement. See, today I'll come in a reverse way. It's always uh, we want to go in from very basics because uh, so if you try to do with uh, like basic things people will understand okay you are uh, you are not having a good experience that's why you need to do things from the pipeline okay pl underscore okay validation pipeline something validation pipeline okay so in this what you need to do go to copy data to bring the copy data activity what is our source source is source data click new in this block students click continue so what type of data we have csv click continue so this is a source data set ds underscore source data set ds for Azure block store source data set use this linker service so select your folder from which folder you want to build that is it first is at the click ok is this clear how I have created source data set. Is this clear to all of you? Shiv Prasad clear? Vikash? Yeah. Yeah, clear. The small letters clear. Purna clear? Dev Kalyan? So this is the data, simple data set again. So now go to sync. So you need to remember whether I, I selected any file or I just selected till the folder level. In this data set, folder, 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 folder level. level. Yes, if I want to read all the files which I have in the folder, what I need to do in the source source data set side? Uh, wildcard file path star. You can Very good. We need to use a wildcard file path. We need to use star. Okay. Wild cut file path, we need to use this star. Next, let's go to this sync. Let's click new. So, where we want to copy data block stores, click continue as a CSV, click continue. So, this is basically data set for Azure block store, but this is basically sync data set. First, I that the browse it and where to load this data into output. That's all. Click OK. There's some output data. You know already how to copy data from block to block, isn't it? So this is very, very easy to understand. Now the question is, if I copy data, if I copy data, what columns will go? Just click on preview data. See, this is the data will go. This is the data will go. Okay. But yeah, so this is the data will go, but you need to understand one more thing. Okay, let's say first time without doing anything, I'll just debug the pipeline. So when I debug, what will happen? Can you tell me in my output folder? I should be able to see these three files. In my output folder, if you go here. Yeah, I'll 
you click on a container go inside output see in output i am able to see those three files you go to uh, pipeline you see this is the pipeline now let's click on this output side so here you see the files read is how many how many what is the files written three how to get this files read and files are written can anybody guess it and tell me at the rate activity of copy activity dot output to dot what i need to do to get this value three output to dot files read, read. file very files read you say on output to get this value three next so to get the number of files written what i need to do to get this number uh, files written files written files written that's all you just have to understand files written files written these two values you need to take and compare whether these two are same or not okay let's try to do that come here so i just use a if if activity okay before i use if activity and other things other things one of the thing you understood so how to how we will come to understand how we will understand is the number of files read is three the number of files written is three is at the rate activity of the activity of copy activity dot output dot files read in the same way if you want to get files written you need to set the rate activity of copy activity dot output dot files written okay this you understand next click on this so from here also you can clearly understand see files read is three files written is three okay files read is three files written is three okay so from where to where you copy from azure blob storage which is there in east to west data center to azure blob storage which is there in the east to west because we know we copy data from input container to the output container from same storage within the same storage we move files from input container to output container so succeeded so whether copying data from year to year is succeeded or not yes it is succeeded okay close this now click on this let's go into your output output folder let's let's click on one of the output file click on edit do you see any extra columns do you see any extra columns in this files no do you see any extra columns in this file you see no you have only the number of columns that we have in the source credit id credit type credit name and credit so these are four columns so these first two are about cricket players this four like this results.csv file is talking about credit card data now let me just to delete these three files when i am loading next time when i am loading these files next time i want to add some extra columns and load it okay now come here okay see here you have something called additional columns just click on new and just say here my file name so if you want to get the file name you just have to use the file path okay file path you need to get it. example name means file name means uh, come here let's go here so go inside input this is the file okay first two dot csv is the file from this file data i'm loading into my output so now with this additional column my file name this is my column name now what happens when it is loading data into my output folder right so it will come like my file name and it will just put what is the file name first two dot csv okay next first two dot csv likewise oh shit. yes so this same thing will come here so meaning first two dots yes, likewise so for remaining things for this and this and this also will come first two dots yes, first two dots yes. my file is the column name which i have given here oh sorry my file name i have given right my file name is the column name to this the dollar dollar file path means it will just give the file name this is the first two dots yes, first two dots yes, file path really. but source that i no need to add this time showing this is how the things will change when you load this particular source file to your destination your output okay but now you save it and you can give you data you have original data but when i am loading extra column will come what is that extra column name my file name 
next click new click new one more column i want to know that is load underscore date load underscore date when this particular uh, file is loaded that particular date I, then you just remove that you can say um add dynamic content okay add dynamic content so here you have something called current underscore date sorry utc now have something called utc now just click on this it will generate the date in a utc time now if you want to convert this utc time to the ist so then we have something called convert from okay see convert time zone or convert convert from utc time so from utc time i want to convert into ist then you need to say select this okay. convert from utc here you need to generate the utc time see this utc now time will come so this time whatever time is going to come dynamically that time i will convert into india standard time okay so this function what it will do whatever date utc date is generated that date it will convert into india standard time you understood everybody understood this is this clear friends so utc now will generate the time in a utc format iest india standard time okay utc est something different that time zones will have right so utc now it will give uh, that time it will give that time i want to convert into india standard and that's why i'm saying i'm using convert from utc it is a function for convert from utc click finish understood so it will just put the uh, it will add one more column called load date in that load date we add this column let's debug this we'll see whether it is working or not So succeeded go to your output folders let's click on each file click on yeah see here my file name so customer customer.csv okay load date so 836 ist is 836 so current time is giving in a ist okay if you want to get this particular date in a uh, our own format that is also possible okay in whatever format you want to display date year y y y m m d d in any format whatever format you want to display so this is the data okay everybody's clear see here you have okay so one thing just convert into this not just to download this in this file okay, wherever you see same thing but um, Keep it here. Notepad plus plus you can keep and you can save it as a CSV to understand more clearly. You understood why what I'm doing? Just to saving this file as a CSV so that you can clearly see what is the see so this is the data came you understood see i have added a my file name so results.csv results.csv load date so this is the date current date okay. when it ran okay this is my source data to this source data i have added these two columns for all the files for all the files i have copied them so you see this for this you have for this we have already checked let's check for the custard text Okay, this is the one but now my question is 
where we have selected dot txt file we selected csv right but why these txt files are coming Inside anybody have what said we are not so we are not changing the okay so in, yes so i will tell you what you need to change this is a simple change you need to do okay go to sync so sync said file extension even though you have selected as a csv it will consider as a text you need to say hey, no it's not a txt it should be a csv you need to make this and then debug Clear, it's copied. <laughs> now come here, output, click refresh, click on results.csv, click it. See here, this time it's a dot csv file, so you can just click preview data. But uh, there is uh, some special characters is coming because, uh, because of this double quotes. Okay, because of this double quotes. Okay, clear, friends. Yeah, here uh, we added file name and last date, loaded date, right? But if I want yeah. to add a player age, how we can do that? For example, player. extra or column age, like you know, how you will calculate age based yes. on, like you know, see, example, if you want to add one more column here, age, just write age. So it's custom, right? Just click custom. So what? How you want to calculate? Suppose you want to some hard code, hard coded value you want to give. You can just give some hard coded value. Okay. So age is uh, for everybody. It is some something thirty. Okay. So just give thirty. Okay. Now let's delete these files from output. It's it's not 30 every time right each and every player each and every uh, you know uh, record i need to change it right wait see copy activity means just you are going to do the copy if you want to transform okay you want to calculate something you need to go for the data flows we are still in a process of learning the copy data activity few things you can able to do but Whatever you want to write logic, all the logics you cannot able to write it in this. Okay. 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 So those transformation, we need to go for data flows. In data flows, we are going to implement those logics. Okay, if the customer is from uh, maybe from this location, average age is something like this. If the customer is from Y location, average is this. So if the age is available, get it, otherwise generate a default age, all those values we are going to be all those calculations, we're going to do it in a data plus not here. Okay. So for now, yeah. So you understood, right? So if you want to debug, you can debug. So now age 30 will come. I'm here, refresh this. Click on this first two directions. Go to edit. See, age 30 came, right? Yes. So, yeah. if you want any hard coded value, you will get it. Okay, fine. This is fine. Now, uh, Malaya. Hold out. See, right now we have changed uh, total uh, files in the uh, on container. I don't want Correct. to do like that, but I want to few files only in the container. Hmm. Okay. Here only we no. can do like that. You need to tell me. We already completed these kind of scenarios. See, it's not a direct way. You need to understand from the activities that we have learned. Suppose now, so first you need to specify from you, uh, from yourself. You you are going to answer all uh, all your doubts now. See, first tell me out of these three files, out of these three input files, which files you are trying to modify third file i want to modify result csv okay, results dot csv so out of these three files if you if i want to get only results dot csv file what you need to do what actually you use to get only results dot csv out of these three 
copy activity only we need to select the particular uh, prefix prefix you can use very good that is one way second way you can use filter activity as we discussed okay so you you are answering multiple ways right so just you need to think that's all you will get all the answers now once you get only that particular based on prefix if you get one file so only in that particular file these changes will happen and it will write it into the output folder okay see i have three you are asking me to make a change only in a results.csv i i'm going to do exactly same what you answered okay go to source instead of for wildcard i will use a prefix prefix must to be result okay now just Debug this. Yes, it succeeded. Now come here, refresh. In output, you will see only one file. If you open this file, you will have that data. This is one way, but we can also use a filter activity. See? Clear modi? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Malaya, I think we can only append the values at the end, right? Uh, with the new columns. Yes, yes. So in the means, so I think what you can do, come here, come to mapping. Okay. So let's say here, let me just try. I am not sure about this. Just to click import schema. Okay. See, so basically, you have this age, all those things, isn't it? We have these age columns, everything, right? So here, let's say these age columns, everything. I want to change it. Okay, I want to change the order. Maybe what you can do. Okay, something load date. I move to the a little bit top, right? So load date. I move to the little bit top. You understood? Maybe load date. I will move at yeah. the top. Is it possible or not? See, I, I can able to change it here, but will this change come in your output or not? I did not check. Let me check. You understood now? Yeah. I have done. I just moved the load date from top to little bit second. But all those things, whatever you are requesting, all those things, we can able to do it in the data flow. But what else we can do? Maximum things that we can do with the help of copy activity, I will show you. See, load date, I moved to the second place. When I debug, will it come in a second place or not? You check. My output, I don't have anything. So, copy activity is running. Yes, it ran. Come here, refresh this. Click on this file. Load date. It. See, load date is coming at the second place. It's a, you can able to change those. Yeah. The order is you can able to change. You understood from and uh, right? for the time we have to give the full uh, uh, name right like india standard time or short form also can we give india stand no i think you need to give the full form we are in dynamic content you mean right okay because in us we have three time zones right eastern uh, stand, uh, pacific so for that also we have to give full uh, yes, yes. time zone okay yes so ist and all will not work if you want let's try that let me just to try i did not check that so i'll just check with highest okay uh, let me delete this particular file first okay output file we don't have come here let's sort of debug we'll see i i don't think it will work but uh, we can have it try see it is throwing error what error it is throwing same error because of that ist i think Let's go and uh, check the error message. Malay, it doesn't uh, validate the expression uh, when we give it, or it will only happen during the execution. What expression it is not going to validate? Uh, no, I mean, uh, whatever we uh, gave, right? Uh, and the rate convert ISA, so it will not, because it's a string, that's why it did not validate? Or? It will not validate, it will just to see it. See, these are functions. Functions should validate. Function is going to validate when you uh, when you ran. 
I think the validation occurs at debug level, I guess. The stream yes, value. Yes. Debug level. It's a runtime at runtime. This validation is going. To... Yeah. Any questions, friends? Fine. No questions. Fine. Let's quickly finish our lab that we planned today. Come to copy activity. Go to source. Come down. Here, instead of uh, base, what you need to do? So, but this can be in a capital or small. That is not a problem. And the capital or small, it will work. Okay, that that will work. So I know I don't want to change. Okay. So, but let's check in output folder. Do we have any files? We don't have anything. I delete it. Now, see in copy activity, you remember. Let me just debug one second for just to show you. So, with capital, with capital India standard time. So, will it work or not? It will work 100%. Yes, it is working. Come here, refresh. So, same thing. Same thing will have inside the if you want to see. You can see. Just see date everything here. Now, so a lot of things you can able to do. Those things we'll see. Okay, fine. Come back. Now let's go to this output. What do we have? Files reader, files written. Okay. So now I will use the if activity. If just bring if condition. Output of copy added. I need to pass to the if condition. So I need to put some expression add dynamic content. So first I will just take output dot files read. You remember what it will give? It will give the files in the same way. Files written items. What it will give? Next? It will give the number of files read. It will give the number of files written. So this is the first argument. This is the second argument. So what I will do? Example, you have something at, at the rate equals at the rate equals three comma three. What it will return if I use only this line? True. True. Okay. okay, very good. So it will return a yeah? true. If I use something like this, it falls. False. false. This one. False. 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 Okay. So that numbers these three and one are something numbers i'll just generate first input i'll get it from the files read at the rate you no need to use for each dynamic content only one time you need to get the other okay so these are my input so next argument is the number of files written this this will give you the value next value understood so this is my uh, dynamic content which is going to validate files read is equal to files written. If both are equal, if both are equal means successfully all files moved from source to destination. All files moved from source to destination. Okay. Now come to general. Come to activities. Okay. Uh, go to like now it will be true. If it is true means all files copied. If it is a true I need to I need to go and say delete active I won't use delete bring the delete in delete what will happen source so from where you want to delete uh, single think data set is the output source data set is input. so once source. the file moved from input container yes from input container we need to delete it so I'm just deleting so when you delete, you want to understand what files deleted, all that information, you can take the logs. Okay. So for now, I'm just disabling the logs and I will run the pipeline. Next to time, I will enable the logs and I will run the pipeline. Okay. So that's all you need to do. You know, you don't need to do anything. But in source data set side, you selected only folder. Now I want to remove all the files which are copied. So wildcard file path, I will say star and come here copy data activity side also copy data activity side also i want to say copy all the files that is wildcard i'll use the wildcard you understood 
from i am just trying to copy all the files from source to destination if all files copied into destination successfully i am deleting by using a delete action just to select this data set what this data set inside will have this data set will point to the your input container input container i have not specified any file i have mentioned in a pipeline here star well cut file name i mentioned star is it clear is this clear any questions friends okay let's delete this let's debug now okay what will happen we'll see but the what i wanted to see so it should not delete the things immediately so before it deletes the data i want to wait for i want to wait for because we did not know whether it is really deleted that's why i want to wait for at least 30 seconds okay first to copy data successfully then wait for 30 seconds then delete it okay now it will be easy for us to understand the okay. debug this debug say output folder does not have anything so my copy actually is running it is going to copy those three files now it will copy and this file now Copy activity was successful, but why it is failed suddenly? Click on this. Okay, so come here. Come to set mapping. So do one thing. You delete this mapping. So mapping you should not create. You need to delete this mapping. The reason is we have a different types of file with a different schema. so you cannot say one type of schema you cannot decide that's why i need to delete it the reason is some of the files is having a ticket players data some of the files are having a credit card data so different schema here to copy different schema you cannot say you cannot define a particular schema right you have different schema when you want to copy different schema you should not define any schema here now you click debug copy activity is in progress it copied successfully let's go to output in output all these three files came but go to source in source also in input container also we have these three files for now because the thing is what is happening your wait activity is executed okay so wait activity within 10 seconds your input files will be will vanish Yeah, your wait activity is finished. Delete activity is also finished. Look at this. See gone. So inside import, inside input folder, you don't have any files. Everything is deleted. Is this clear? Okay. Now I have not collected any logs. I have not collected any logs. Now let's say go to output. Okay, so from output, from output, I want to get the data into my. Okay, so let me confuse. That's why I'm just deleting all the files which have been output. Now go to input. Let's upload again some files. First two, two, three results not CSV. Reject results on that CSV. Multiple files I have. Okay, upload all the different types of files. No issue. You can upload a different types of files. I have uploaded total five. This time I want to collect the logs. Okay, so once I deleted, go to true activities. Once I deleted, I want to collect the logs. Go to logging settings. You need to enable these logs. So logs will talks about where you want to store this logging information. Select a linked service, blob storage. Inside blob storage. i will create a one more container here log container logs so in this logs folder it is going to store all the logs okay i just select the folder path so logs select logs click okay so in this logs it is going to keep all the logs 
okay application works delete logs okay now inside the output container i don't have any files you see but input input content inside input container we have some files okay now let's go to output container okay let's wait here we will see we will get some files let's debug this pipeline in progress oh wait activity is executing let me show you meanwhile see all files came go to your input folder you should be able to see all the five files but all those five files will vanish yeah delete it. yes it is finished no results because it is deleted now we'll see what files it is deleted go to logs click on this click on this file it will have a complete information what it has deleted see so cast to dot says you file deleted status this is deleted this is deleted status okay in logs we will come to know what files deleted you are clear you can retrieve this log files also right this is okay any questions from if no questions uh, malaya one just, question just tell me yeah in if condition i think uh, we have only given in true activity so false is not given right false is not given but you know right so simple right? yeah yeah so it's not mandatory right we have to give both it's not mandatory it's not mandatory yeah. okay okay well, yeah, actually we copy the data from output input to output right once Correct. deleted in wood uh, we can retrieve same data to output to input also right yes sir, same see how you are copying data from input container to output container in the same way you can copy data from output container to input container i thought of doing that but people will confuse that's why i have not done that but you can try those things if you understood the concept if you understood the concept so you can try that simple data sets yeah. you need to clap it the activity is two means copy data activity if condition activity here general activities too copy i did not understand what you are asking here activity 2 is there no general activity 2 we have to done general. two activities when you click on the if condition amalaya um, there are two okay. activities for true and false right? correct correct so you can just add if the condition is true you are going to execute true activities if the condition is false you are going to execute false activities the two conditions will just go inside true i have added two activities that's why it is showing two activities okay if you come back in this condition activities i have not added any activities in false that's why no activities it is showing here malaya could you please uh, show false activities false and just click on this that's all nothing you have so you just put some weight okay. 60 seconds or something okay so when this condition becomes false when this condition becomes false so in that case what happens your false activity will execute but we cannot make that condition false the reason is some system failure when system is failure happen in back end you read the data but while you are writing the data so something fail okay so in such cases you will get those issues okay the Malaya, one more question failure is very very low okay and malaya one more question the when we read the files it's just the count but uh, can we uh, get i mean can we validate whether the all the content also has been transferred from the file that is also possible or not yes the content also you can validate with the help of a uh, uh, data science <coughs> okay so we have uh, variables for that as well okay data read data written so if, okay. if both the same the like see why it is showing the more data written because we added extra columns while writing 
Okay. Okay. So, but if you just want to validate whatever data read, everything is written. You just have to read it in a data read level, data size. Okay. We can also check for the number of rows that is also available. Number of records. Those things I will show you. The number of records read, all those things will count. It. Okay. Mal, I have one question, Mal. Yeah. Actually, uh, you have removed the map items because uh, uh, every file not matching the thing, so you have yeah. removed yeah. the mapping things. After checking, yeah. after checking the errors, we have identified that we have issue in mapping. But we are yeah. the new. How we know that we we have done mistake in the in this side? Do you have any document on that? If this, if See, it, not a document. First thing you need to understand. So mapping schema means you are just mapping the schema like uh, from source. So in real time, what happens? Schema will change very, very un like very, very infrequently. It's not a common, right? So very infrequently, like yearly ones or once in a two years, something like that. Schema will change. So as per the schema, they are going to adjust these pipelines. They will uh, do some change management, right? But the thing is, this schema will not change. Why I have shown you all these things? Because in, in the training, when you are learning the things, these are the common questions people will ask. Okay, so what happens if we have a different types of schema? So that's why I have shown you this. But in real time, you will not see uh, like a different schema in the same uh, folder. Okay. But how, your question is valid, but we are new how we will identify is. So that's what I'm saying. If you're not able to understand what is the problem, you need to reach out to me. I will tell you okay, as you are new. But as you learn the things, you will come to know. By seeing the error message, you will come to know Okay, this is the problem. Initially, you have some, uh, some problem in understanding. So those things you can ping to me or you can reach out to me. I will help you. Okay. Okay, Mali. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, sir. Mali, can I hear me now?